Well, g'day, flatties and globe defenders. This is Critical Think from Down Under. In this video, we're going to model the solar radiation received throughout the day for both the flat Earth Sun and the globe Sun. And we're going to compare the results to see which model is closer to reality. Now, the assumptions are, number one, the flat Earth is flat, and you might think this is very strange indeed, and it is. However, certain flat Earthers like to claim that the flat Earth has no shape. <laughs> and also, once we do model the flat Earth as flat and then show that it doesn't work, they then deny that they have a model. But indeed, the flat Earth is flat. Another assumption is the flat Earth Sun circles the flat Earth as per the FE, Sun, Moon and Zodiac clock. You see that diagram here? That's our model, right? It's published, the only published flat Earth Sun, Moon and clock app. So I think it's legitimate to use that as a flat Earth model. And number three, solar absorption in the atmosphere is constant throughout the day. Well, of course it's not, but uh, I'm going to neglect the effects of more atmosphere in the morning and afternoon. And we'll see how we go. Now here's my model of how the solar radiation would happen during the day. This is what they measure. Let's just say we have a one square meter here. You can see that's one square meter. The sun doesn't always shine directly down. Now, if it was shining directly down overhead, as it would be at solar noon in this location at the summer solstice, then it would be one square meter of sunlight. Now, when the sun's at an angle, then um, the sun is not one square meter. So I've got the this here ch square tube is like the sunlight shining at an angle sometime in the morning say and uh, the actual sunlight that hits that one square meter because it's an angle is smaller now in this case it's about a half a square meter so there would be half the amount of sunlight so I can work out given the elevation and azimuth of the sun and this is the elevation up here this triangle azimuth represents by the triangle down there on the ground so given those elevations and azimuth then the amount of sunlight is uh, calculated by taking the sine of both those angles now I've got my flat earth model here uh, I use this to work out what the elevation and azimuth of the sun is now this here, this inner circle is the equator on this flat earth and uh, the outer circle there is the Tropic of Capricorn. Now in this case, uh, in this diagram, I've got the sun at 4,800 kilometers high. Now of course flat earthers don't know the height of the sun, they don't know anything much, but there that looks about right if you look at all their diagrams and, and the uh, flat Earth, Sun and Moon and Zodiac clock. So that's about what it looks like. Now the interesting thing here is that if we go down to the ground, now there's a mountain at Rockhampton, 600 metres high, and that's represented by this little tick here. This is 600 metres. If we can, there we go, 600 metres in that. And if we stand at the top of that mountain, uh, we can see that over there on the opposite side is the sun at midnight. So flat earthers say that the sun disappears because it's too far away. But in this model here, it's quite plain to see that the sun is not too far away. And uh, if I put my camera back there at that place again. So... There, way down there. Ah, that's the sun at midnight. And I tried to move the camera around. You can see you always have the sun in view no matter the time of day. So we know that doesn't happen in real life. So that's another reason why that the uh, flat earth just doesn't work. 
But remember, this is their model, the flat earth, sun and moon calculator model. And if we're standing on the ground or 600 metres above the ground, we can always see the sun. Funny about that. Now here's the one minute solar data, which is from the Australian Government Bureau of Meteorology. And you can see Rockhampton Airport is one of the stations. Conveniently, this is almost at the Tropic of Capricorn. Just a very, very short distance, close enough on a global scale to say, yeah, it's pretty much spot on. So I've got that data and I've used suncalc.org uh, to get the data for the globe, right? This is the globe model and uh, at this location you can get the sun azimuth and elevation for any time of the day you like. So when trying to calculate for the flat earth what the azimuth and elevation of the sun is at any particular time of the day, uh, I've got two methods. This one here, a little bit of trigonometry. We know how far it is. We know how far away it is from the Tropic of Capricorn to the center of the flat earth. And uh, we can do some calculations and work out this angle A and D, horizontal distance to the sun. And to work out the distance to the actual sun, it's another trigonometry uh, equation. We can work out the elevation angle and then this distance because we know the height of the sun. We know the distance here because we worked it out over here. And that means we can get the distance to the sun and the elevation angle. I've also used an alternate means of calculation. And this is one that Ruhef likes to do. This is converting the latitude and longitude to X and Y coordinates, Cartesian coordinates. And so calculate the coordinates of the sun, calculate the coordinates of the observer, use the Pythagoras theorem to work out what the distance to the sun is. And again, we can work out the elevation angle up there and the distance to the sun. And we've got these angles here to work out what the azimuth of the sun is. Now another factor that comes into play with the flat earth is the inverse square law. As the uh, flat earth sun revolves around the flat earth, you can see it's getting further away and closer, exactly as what we're told by the flat earthers. So the inverse square law would apply to the sunlight coming from the sun. And uh, Taboo Conspiracy would know about the inverse square law. He did this video a little while ago, but unfortunately he made a big error in the calculations. And what? The video's gone. Whoa. What happened there, Taboo? Did you get something wrong? You're afraid to admit it? Oh dear. Right, so here's my spreadsheet. Down the left here, I've got all the minute-by-minute minute readings for solar radiation taken from the Bureau of Meteorology. Now, that's a lot of data, and I didn't want to uh, use it all because that would be very tedious. So I've taken a point 15 minutes past the hour and 45 minutes past the hour I've averaged all the readings in the prior 15 minutes and the 15 minutes after, and I've put that number here in this spreadsheet, transferred those numbers to this column here that says measured. And this is the time of day here in this column. From suncalc.org, I've got the elevation and azimuth data, and I've calculated, used my sun radiation model, what the globe Earth radiation pattern should look like. Now I've got some other calculations up here that I need for various uh, parts of the spreadsheet and one of them is the time correction in minutes from solar noon to the actual noon and uh, we need this to work out the flat earth sun. Now for the flat earth sun 
The elevation and azimuth are calculated with all these intermediate calculations for B, X, L and D. They're on the other diagram for my uh, to do my flat earth calculations and uh, work out the distance and then work out what the radiation would be on the flat earth. So we're plotting a few things here. This is the measured radiation. And on this particular day, you can see there was a couple of clouds in the sky. And uh, I could probably find a day where there were no clouds, but that's okay, this will do. Now, I've also plotted there the globe calculated data. So as you can see, what's uh, expected on the globe is pretty close match for what we measured. Now then we compare that to the flat earth. And we get a different graph. Now this is exactly as expected because you remember the flat earth sun is far away and it becomes closer. And as it gets closer the inverse square law takes effect. And so what you would experience in this model is that up until about 10 a.m. the sun would be pretty weak and then over the couple of hours from 10 a.m. to midday the sun would suddenly get very hot very quickly and then uh, in the afternoon it would get very cold very quickly so um, that's not what we observe so the flat earth model sun on a circular path doesn't fit now there's the other problem of um, the direction of the sun. Now, if you were to go to the top of Mount Archer in the morning of December the 22nd and look out at an angle of 39.8 degrees, you won't see the sun. Now, the sun, you're going to see it at 115 degrees. So that's quite a big bit of difference. That's about 70 degrees. So what's going wrong on the flat earth there? Not only is the sun too high in the sky, it's in the wrong direction. Now flat earthers have an excuse for this. They say that the sunlight somehow bends around to be in the place that we see it. Now if we try to look at that, what that would look like. Here's your flat earth, there's your sun, and instead of the light travelling to the observer in a more or less straight line, according to these proponents of the flat earth, the sunlight needs to loop right around like this and do something magic like curve like that. So how does that happen? That just doesn't happen, does it? Oh, look at that. That curve right around there. It's ridiculous, isn't it? <laughs> so putting it on this map with suncalc.org, the yellow line here is the path of the sun as you would observe it on the globe and as how we observe it in reality. Now the orange circle here is the path of the sun in terms of direction. It's not the distance of the sun. It's just a, a, a diagram to give you the direction. But these would be the kinds of directions to the sun throughout the day. Now that is, of course, a huge difference. Now I often hear uh, things that flat earthers can't prove the flat earth. And uh, I did see a comment by Sleepy Warrior that says, oh, we don't have enough money to do the research. Well, here... In this case, all you need to do is put a stick in the ground and measure the shadow throughout the day. Now, how much is that going to cost? Not a lot. So when you measured the shadow here, it would be the inverted shape you see there if it was flat, and this inverted shape if it was globe. So get out there, you flatties. Put a stick in the ground and measure the shadow, see what you get. Now, going back to our spreadsheet, now... You, say, you might say, well, what about if this magic bendy light that causes the light to uh, go in a horseshoe, what if that's actually real? Well, let's just, I've plotted that here where I've got the fake refraction in place and uh, I'll show you what that looks like with the impossible refraction. 
It's not really that much different. So even if your sunlight could do that impossible horseshoe, they're still not going to match what we actually measure for the solar radiation. The main problem is you want your sun to be small and local. And if it's going to be small and local, it's going to get closer real quickly and get far away real quickly. And the sunlight would be getting very strong real quickly and then getting very weak real quickly. But that doesn't happen. So I said I did this twice and I have my other spreadsheet. And this time I've got the latitude, longitude, sun X, sun, sun Y. And um, same, very similar looking graph, just calculated differently but it ends up looking exactly the same. So I think that's uh, pretty much conclusive evidence that um, the flat earth model just doesn't work if you take the solar radiation into account. Just like the flat earth just doesn't work if you take reality into account. Solar radiation is just one part of reality. There's many other parts. So that's it. Game over again. Hey, look. I'm almost at 3,000 subs as I submit this video, so a few more subs wouldn't be too bad there just to get me over the line of the 3,000. That'd be good. Don't let those flatties have more subs than my channel. Oh, no, that's no good. We can't have them thinking that they're right because they have more subs. So boost me sub count. Let's do it. See you next time.